On this week's gadget show, Web TV, John's looking at the stars. I bring you the latest tech news, and Otis shows you how to get your favourite websites to speak to you. Come on, we're on the number. Welcome to Web TV. This week, John's been braving the cold evenings to gaze at stars with the help of Sky Scout. It's designed to locate and identify over 6,000 planets, stars, and constellations. So, as ever, to check it out, John's given it a good and thorough testing. I have to admit, I've always been a bit ignorant when it comes to the night sky. I don't know my Mars from my Vega, my Saturn from my Crab Nebula. But with a Celestron Sky Scout, I ought to be able to do something about it. What it is, is a sort of sighting device that combines GPS, a calendar, a clock, an accelerometer and a compass. So it knows where you are, wherever you are on Earth. And if you point it up at the sky, if you look through the sight at night, it should know exactly what you're pointing it at. Now, when you switch it on, you have to wait a little while for the GPS to find out where it is. It's not quite as quick, say, as an in-car unit. It's finding satellites, getting a fix there. Yes, GPS fix acquired. There are various modes. I'm going to start with the identify mode. I hit the identify button. I put the sight up to my eye, find the object I want to identify, and when I've got it, I press the target button on the top. Let's have a look. Ooh, there's a nice bright star there. Now, this isn't actually a lens, it's just clear glass, actually, but it's illuminated red inside, which helps you target it properly. Let's hit target. And it tells you what it is. In this case, it's Jupiter. Having found my object, I can then look at a text description of it. I can look at some scientific data about it. Or if it's one of the bigger objects in the sky, I can actually hear an audio description. Jupiter is the largest of our solar system's planets, with a diameter equivalent to 11 Earths. In all, there are about 6,000 items in the database, so uh, certainly enough for many evenings stargazing. There's also a locate function where you can be guided to a particular object in the sky. I think I'll go for the star Vegas. I put that in the menu, look through the site, and then LEDs appear round the edge of the site. If the LED appears to the right as it's doing now, I move the unit to the right, and now it's going up a bit. I've got an LED at the top, one a bit towards the left, one a bit towards the right. And uh, I'm getting there. Oh, now they're all lit up. And I can see it through the site in the middle. That, the other side of this tree, is Vega. Brilliant. There are other modes as well. You can set it to list tonight's highlights or indeed give you a tour of the sky. And because it's such a well-established unit, you can get quite a few accessories for it. For example, you can get additional descriptions and audio material on SD cards that fits into a slot in the front. Now, it's not perfect. Battery life isn't brilliant. You can easily get through a pair of AA batteries on an evening's viewing. And it's quite expensive at nearly £200. But it is a genuinely informative, genuinely interactive and genuinely educational experience, which is really rather refreshing. Right, news time now. And first up, if you've been holding off buying a MacBook because you're waiting for that ever-elusive Apple tablet to emerge, you might be in luck. Rumour has it that Apple is ready to greenlight the manufacturing of the tablet in China, which is said to take place in February and due to go on sale as early as March. The Apple tablet has had the rumour mill in a frenzy ever since stories first started to emerge, but with more conclusive evidence becoming available, it raises the question of when rather than if. It's reported that the Apple tablet has a screen size of 10.1 inches with capacitive multi-touch capabilities. And with a price tag of around $1,000, it looks like the Apple tablet could become the must-have gadget for 2010. In 2006, the World Cup was one of the first sports tournaments to be screened in HD. And it looks like next year's World Cup could be trend-setting again, as FIFA and Sony have announced that the 2010 World Cup will be recorded and broadcast in 3D. This means that selected World Cup games will be recorded using Sony cameras and shown in special locations around the world. Seven cities will get the chance to see the 3D football matches, with London amongst the venues. 
Other cities include Berlin, Paris, Rome and Sydney, so if you're wanting to catch England in their 3D glory, you're going to have to make your way to London. Sony believes it's the perfect way to demonstrate the virtues of 3D entertainment, and with more platforms being billed as 3D in the next 12 months, it may give people the hunger to go out and purchase a 3D-ready TV. Right, have you ever wanted to read your favourite websites when you're out but don't want to lug your laptop around? Well, Otis might have the answer to help with the text-to-speech software from Natural Readers. Now, if you're one of those people that likes to take everything with you in portable form, then I think you're going to like this. It's a free piece of software called Natural Reader that converts text into spoken word. Now, technology like this has been around for a while, but Natural Reader takes it to a slightly higher level in that when you convert your written word into spoken word, the file that you save it all under is actually an MP3 file. So you can take that file with you absolutely everywhere. For instance, if you like reading uh, e-magazines but on one particular morning you don't have the time to uh, read it, you can merely copy and paste all the text that you want to know about into this program and it will speak it to you. And you can take it wherever you want. You can take it on the bus, you can listen to it in the car or while you jog. Now the great thing um, about this software is it's free, which we always like, and the MP3 aspect of it enables you to take it anywhere you want. Now when I first heard about this tech I thought okay it, it sounds good, it sounds like they've evolved something that already exists and they've taken it to another level. But just how good is it? So I came up with the ultimate test. Yeah, I thought it's got to be able to perform one of my favourite tracks. Let's see how it does. Hear me now. I la, did that la, 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 la. Wrong, 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 wrong. G A G A Lola. I want your bad romance. Ra ra la la la. Wrong the wrong the mama. G A G A Lola. Want your bad romance. I want your love 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 love. I want your love 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 love. I want your love. You know that I. Okay, so you. You, you, you get you get the idea. It's, okay, it's not a musical piece of software, but uh, you you recognised it as Lady Gaga, didn't you? So, as you can hear, the text speech isn't, it doesn't have a great human quality to it, but you can adjust the speed and it's a leap from what we were trying to listen to a few years ago. It's portable and it's free. Well, that's all we've got time for today, but don't forget if you're still in need of last minute inspiration for Christmas presents to check out our Web TV Christmas special as we run down the top 50 gadgets for Christmas this year. Unfortunately, the main show is now off air, but fear not because we'll be back on your screen in the first week of February. Until then, be sure to check out our Facebook and Twitter pages to keep up to date with all the latest goings on here at Gadget Towers, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>